I am Josh Smith of Josh Smith Knives, and on a previous video, we made a billet of Damascus of 1080 and 15 and 20 layers. Uh, this is 114 layers. We've kind of got an alternating stack from thick and thin layers in here. And we just took half that billet and we cut it in half and we set it aside. So now we're gonna pick back up on this billet. As you can see, it's just kind of all mangled and half formed and whatnot. We're gonna forge it out into a square bar, turn it around a little bit, and then we're gonna twist it. And all these layers that are running through this bar this way are gonna just twist around and around the center of that bar. So we're gonna light the forge, get it hot, and uh, get after it. this forge that gives us kind of a reducing atmosphere where there's more gas in the forge than oxygen so if we do any forge welding we don't oxidize the layers and keep them from welding together so when you're starting your forge at home try and get that nice flame kicking out of the front of that forge if you're just forging a blade it doesn't matter and you can actually back that flame back in that forge by turning your gas down Okay, we've got this bar fit up, ready to go into my twister. Uh, now, from this part about here down to here, I'm gonna just knock these corners off uh, in my press. I'm gonna kind of make that bar round. It doesn't, it's not gonna be perfectly round by any means. I'm just gonna knock those corners off. I found that helps when I go to forge weld this down uh, at the end to make it into a bar, we get less cracking. Uh, or less problems with like those little seams wanting to travel through the blade. So we're just gonna knock those off right now. Okay, we are ready to twist this bar of steel. I'm gonna show you how you can twist it at home with a, with a pipe wrench and I just welded a rebar handle on the other end of it. It's absolutely a good way to go. You can do it. Uh, you're gonna see it's a lot of work and it's tough to get it really, really tight. Uh, after I do maybe a heat with that, then I'm gonna go to my twister and show you my way. There's a lot of different powered ways you can do twisters, um, but mine's pretty cool. Okay, here we go on twisting by hand. Gotta be fairly quick if we can. got to get by that press okay so I could keep going on that but I'm not going to because I don't want to mangle up the end of the bar here where I'm going to put it in my twister but as you can see we're getting some super cool twisting going on in there. And I just have to do that over and over and over and over again. Um, the other reason I stopped is because I don't twist in here, my twisting bar is wanting to hit my press right here. So I'd rather not get my bill at all kind of wonky. So I'm gonna just straighten it out on the anvil here and then we'll go into my twister.
Okay, so we're doing our final twist here. I gotta get it kind of mounted up, which sometimes it's a fight. Gotta twist the same way I went before. And I'm just looking for any little spot that looks like it might wanna tear. It's twisting nice, I don't wanna tear that bar up. It's really even. I'm gonna call that good right there. I'm d I was just looking for any crack or anything like that, but I got a really even twist from the back to the front. I love it, I don't see any problem. We're good to go. Okay, I'm cleaning this off and uh, just looking for any problem areas. It is just super, super clean. Not a problem in the world. Really looks good. So we're just gonna heat that up and now we're gonna press that down into a, to a bar of steel for a usable blade. Okay, on our first squeeze after that twist, this is where people tend to screw them up. We just gotta go easy, kind of all the way around, and I just kind of push all those little points, those twist points that I call them, sticking up, we just kind of work them back down into a solid bar. We don't wanna just squeeze the heck out of the bar, because we can actually split that bar open as we go farther down on those spots. So now, now we've got basically a octagonal type bar here. Uh, and I've just pushed all these little points down in, kind of solidified it, and now I can actually start to draw that bar up just a little bit. So it's looking really good. If I, if I had anything that was bothering me at all, crack-wise, I would actually flux this, this bar. I put a little bit of anhydrous borax flux on it, I'd put it back in, I'd get really hot, and I'd work on that slowly and try and get that all the forge weld back in. But I don't really see too much of a problem. All right, so I changed my mind a little bit. I like the cleaning action of this, this flux. So I'm gonna put a little flux on here. I, right when I put it back in, I see a couple little spots that just, I'm not worried about, but I would like them, I'd like to treat them kind of with some respect. So I've dumped flux on there, it melts and it flows all over that bar and protects that bar. Uh, takes the oxygen off and what it'll, what'll happen is when that bar sits in that fire right now, it's gonna sit in there and it's gonna eat at that and it's gonna actually clean those surfaces of that steel. So any of that flux that might have got caught in the twist, or any of the, uh, I'm sorry, the scale that would have got caught in the twist, that's gonna help clean that, and then when I go to that press and squeeze that, I'm gonna have clean surfaces squeezing together. I, I, there's just no reason to take any chances right now. Uh, I almost went without the flux, but I, I always flux it, and I don't know. I don't know if it's, if it just makes me feel good or not, but. Sometimes confidence is 90% of making Damascus. If you think it's working, it usually does. If you think it's not, it's usually screwed up. bar flattened out from twisting it and along the edge you'll see we just have some little cracks surface cracks along the outside corners and whatnot they actually look worse than they are those don't go deep at all so I'm about a half inch thick here which is way plenty thick so what I usually do and I'm not saying that my methods are always exactly what you should follow but personally I stop right here and I'll go through and I'll basically grind that bar up and I'll get, get rid of most of those cracks. And if I have a problem area, I can kind of dig it out with the grinder. Then I'll go back to the forge 
forge the rest of the way out and forge whatever blade I'm gonna forge. Sometimes these are like cracks in your windshield where they start out as a chip and they end up all the way across the windshield. We don't want that in our blade. So you're better off to go fix that little spot right now or grind it out and uh, get rid of it and then carry on. And we got plenty of material to do that with. So as you can see, it's really nice and tight twist and uh, should be really cool. Maybe forge out a big kitchen knife blade or something out of that. So that's how you make a twist Damascus bar. And uh, check out one of the future videos about how to forge a kitchen knife out of a twist Damascus bar. Thanks.